Hey guys, how you doing? My name is John, Games81, and welcome back to another episode. And today we're going to take a closer look at a fairly rare system released only in Japan by NEC. Same makers of the PC Engine, as we know in the States here in North America, uh, TurboGrafx-16, and it is the PC Shuttle. So let's take a closer look at the system itself, let's see some gameplay, talk about the history. Thanks for watching. Here we have the PC Engine Shuttle. This particular model was released in 1989 it, in Japan only, and it was two years after NEC introduced the PC Engine into the market. Now by this time, it had a pretty good stronghold. Uh, PC Engine was pretty very popular in Japan, and NEC figured, let's make a console kind of unique looking. Let's market, to your let's market it towards your typical guy and, and see how it sells. Now unfortunately, in this particular situation, they didn't really market it very well. Uh, they didn't add a few things, which were basically ended up killing this particular model. And because of that, this the shuttle is actually known fairly is fairly rare, actually, and it's pretty hard to find. And also in Japan, it was known as the satellite, which is also interesting. Uh, but this particular model, let's take a closer look at it. It almost looks like something out of Star Trek. I mean, it's very unique looking in design. Uh, it's got these things really just more for for looks. Uh, this is your on off here, and there's no light or anything to indicate if it's on or off. This is where the games would plug into, and these are where the games were called. These were hue cards, just very similar, almost exactly like uh, the ones you would find for the TurboGrafx-16. This thing is region locked, so we'll not play any North American games and vice versa, okay? But here's an example of the game. Now, this is not the first time that you'd see these kind of style cards for any system. Now, Sega, if you guys remember, had the Sega Mark III in North America is known as the Sega Master System, and those, actually, the Model 1 anyway, could actually play these style cards. Well, not these particular ones, but they had cards that were very similar to it, okay? So these are actually plugged into here, and you have this flap here. I guess it was a kind of a dust flap. Uh, now, if you push this button right here, it actually makes it fly away, and it actually flies and flies around the room and stuff like that. No, I'm just joking. This actually uh, is a lock for your your, D, your AC adapter. I'm not sure why you would necessarily want to lock it, maybe to keep the dust out. But I've never seen any other system have that. That is really interesting. Here we have the AV cable cord. Now the initial PC engine ran off of RF uh, connections, so you know, kind of those old style connections. It wasn't nearly as good. So that's cool that they had this. Eventually NEC had the core system, which would also uh, utilize the AV out. So the, the picture quality was much clearer on your standard TV. It only had one controller port. So similar to like, okay, the 3DO, for example, had a one uh, controller port, but that actually you could plug into other controllers, whereas this one, you have to buy separately uh, an adapter for a four-player uh, tap, which was just it's just another ploy to get more money. And I think that pissed a lot of gamers off. Additionally, you could not play any attachments. So uh, NEC actually was the very first player into the CD life of system. So it actually had the attachment for a CD. There was a PC Engine CD. Uh, you had the TurboGrafx CD also released in, in North America, and this thing is not compatible with that. So that's that's a huge mistake on their end. So why would you want to purchase this? This I'm not sure how much this would cost, but my guess is this is a lot more money than your typical PC Engine. So why would you want to get this if you could get a, a standard one and you could just open your library of games so much more by getting the CD add-on as well? Now, when this thing actually went to hit the market, as I mentioned, it was competing against the Famicom, and it was also competing against the Mark III, both 8-bit. Now, when this also was released in North America during the same time as this in 1989, NEC marketed it as a 16-bit console. That is actually a falsehood. That's not true. However, it is more powerful than an 8-bit system. It's not quite as powerful as your typical 16-bit console. Uh, it did have an 8-bit microprocessor as a CPU. Uh, the speed of it actually was 16-bit, and it had a 16-bit custom video color uh, encoder chip, which is pretty powerful uh, compared to an 8-bit system. However, uh, as far as RAM goes, uh, only had 8 kilobytes of RAM, which is a, a not, very, not very much when you consider the Gen Genesis or Omega Drive had 64, and the Super Famicom had 128. Uh, There's no temporary storage in this thing, the scrolling in the background, I uh, only could do one scroll at a time, so the background you could only, uh, you could only move at one time, whereas um, Super Famicom and the Mega Drive were much more powerful. Now eventually NEC did release the Super Graphics, and that didn't sell very well either, but they did fix a lot of problems uh, as far as RAM goes, they increased the RAM, uh, but they, they, they also could, it could do uh, multiple backgrounds, you know, scrolling at one time. But unfortunately, that was released a little bit too late, and that didn't sell as well either. And I did a video of that earlier as well, if you guys want to check that out. Now, as far as colors goes, it could have it had a 512 colors to choose from. 
Uh, 482 were available on screen at one time. 241 of those colors were in the background and 241 of those colors were in the sprite. So now this is obviously very successful in Japan. Not this particular model, but the PC Engine was very successful in Japan. It wasn't nearly as successful in North America due to lack of third party support and just marketing in general. But it was released in the UK as well. Uh, Telegames actually imported a number of them. It was just known as Turbo Graphics. It was gray model. It looked almost exactly like the North American Turbo Graphics 16. It's very rare. Uh, not many people really knew about it in the UK. But uh, if you do live in the area, definitely look that up. Uh, there is a PAL version of the TurboGrafx-16, or in that case, TurboGrafx. Now, I do want to say one, one benefit of having a PC Engine. If you already have a TurboGrafx-16, why would you want to get a PC Engine? Well, first of all, as I mentioned before, it is a region lock, so the games are not compatible. But the PC Engine has an incredible uh, library of games. Uh, there are a ton of more games released for the PC Engine than here in North America for the TurboGrafx-16. So if you want to check out some games, there's some incredible ones. I'll tell you right now, uh, Street Fighter 2 is probably one of the better ports for the console for the TurboGrafx for this particular PC Engine that was never released in North America, and that port is probably one of my favorite ports of the arcade. Here is the PC Engine Shuttle Controller. Now this, I like actually like the curves of this. Actually handles really well. I like the feel of it. It's a little bit more unique than your standard PC Engine controller in the sense that this is curved here. It's not like that usually. This will work on any PC Engine model. It will also work on the Turbo Duo here in the States. Uh, it will not, is not compatible with the TurboGrafx-16 because the ports here are a little bit different. These are a little bit smaller than the TurboGrafx-16 uh, here in North America. So it's not compatible in that regard. But nevertheless, this is really cool. People even sell these controllers for quite a bit of money on auction sites like eBay. So, so keep check that, out, check that out. The game I'm gonna show you, just to show you an example of what this game system could do, is Legend of Hero Tama. Let's check it out. Legend of Hero Tama was released in 1991 by Iron Corporation. This particular mini screen reminds me a lot of Ghosts and Goblins, the style of kind of map play shows you where you are in the game. This is the only home port of the arcade game release in 1989 by Iron as well. The two turbo button switches I showed you in the controller review, uh, actually if you switch it up, you actually hold down the rapid fire and you can actually jump a little bit higher as well. So it's something uh, totally changes the whole playing dynamic of this game. Now you can jump on your, your enemies and stun them temporarily, but you can't kill them by doing that. You have to fire at them. And you gotta be careful because you only have three lives and when you get hit once, you die. This game was also released for the TurboGrafx-16, but came out in 1993, much later in the life of the TurboGrafx-16. And because it was one of the later releases, it's actually considered quite a rare game. Uh, it is much more rare to find, harder to find the TurboGrafx-16 port than it is the PC Engine one. For those of you who own a Wii, this game is available on the Wii Virtual Console as well. So if you like what you see, definitely check this game out. It is a really fun platformer. This is one of the many hidden gems for either the PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16. I'm curious, what are your favorite games for these systems? Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.